¿Qué? ¿Esto nada? ¿Can you hear me? Yes, but no. My voice is loud enough. <clears throat> Just tell me if your voice go ay mahina, ha? Huh? So, this is your pancreatic hormones. First is insulin. It is a protein hormone from the beta cells of the pancreas. It belongs to the gene family that include insulin-like growth factors 1 and 2 and relaxin. It is synthesized on the polyribosomes as pre-pro-insulin. Then this will attach to the endoplasmic reticulum and process and convert it to your pro-insulin. Then process some more in your Golgi apparatus as active form of insulin. And then the, it is being bound in the secretory granules in zinc bound crystals okay and <clears throat> it is being exocytose exocytosis is the method of release if there is a need for the hormone so this is the appearance of the hormone i'm sorry because we have a carpenter um, lumang bahay maraming maintenance so Ian so this is the pro-insulin form. And then when the C peptide, this pink chain will separate. And so this is the active form, the alpha and beta chains. And then the C chain is the peptide and the chain is being stabilized by disulfide bonds, okay? And this is the one that is being placed in the secretory granules with zinc in it and ready for release. This will uh, find its way into the inner part of the cell membrane ready for release anytime okay from the beta cells of the pancreas is the insulin is an anabolic and hypoglycemic hormone. It facilitates glucose entry into the cells, except in the brain, kidney tubules, intestinal mucosa, and red blood cells. This indirectly facilitates glucose entry into hepatocytes in the liver cells by promoting glyco 
genesis, glycogen. Thus, in the process of converting the glucose inside the liver to glycogen, the amount of glucose inside the cell, liver cell, the hepatocyte, will be reduced. And this insulin directly facilitates glucose entry in other cells by its action on the cell membrane. The <clears throat> receptor is found on the cell membrane. Unlike the cortisol, where the receptor is found in the cytoplasm. Okay. It has, insulin has a half-life of five to eight minutes only, degraded rapidly from the blood by the enzyme insulinase in the liver, kidney, and other tissues. Because insulin is secreted into the portal vein, it is exposed to liver insulinase before it enters the peripheral circulation. Thus, only half of the amount of insulin finds its way into the blood because one half is degraded before leaving the liver. Thus, peripheral tissues are exposed only yet one half of the serum insulin concentration as the liver. Insulin begins to be released a few minutes after food intake. It, if the stimulus is maintained, insulin secretion falls within 10 minutes and slowly rise again within one hour because uh, by batch sila, siya, by batch. We have the early phase and the late phase of insulin release because before food intake, the insulin is already ready uh, inside the cell uh, at the inner portion of the cell membrane. The early phase releases the preformed, whereas the late phase releases the newly formed insulin. Before, <clears throat> during fasting, there is already insulin form inside, and it makes uh, by at the inner part of the cell membrane. Glucose is the primary stimulus of insulin secretion because um, food, especially those who are fond of sweets, uh, talaga ang dami ng glucose doon. Glucose transporter too facilitates entry of glucose into beta cells. And the glucokinase enzyme is the sensor of the beta cells. This phosphorylate the glucose to glucose 6-phosphate upon its entry into the beta cells. It has been found that the rate of glucose entry is correlated to the rate of glucose phosphorylation and directly related to insulin secretion. When glucose enters the cell, it can no longer go out because it is being phosphorylated right away. So it will remain inside the cell. And ATP sensitive potassium channels closes with glucose 6-phosphate metabolism by the beta cells. 
And this has ATP binding subunits called sulfonylureas receptors, which is also activated by sulfonylurea drugs, oral agents for hyperglycemia. Now, since potassium channels are very sensitive to uh, voltage changes because of the ATP. So the calcium channels will open and this activates exocytosis of the insulin and pro-insulin secretory granules. Other factors that increase insulin secretion are amino acids from the protein, beta keto acids, glucagon, acetylcholine from the as a vagal parasympathetic cholinergic innervation in response to a meal. You have discussed that already. Free fat acids, from lipids, through a G protein coupled receptor. Intestinal hormones like your glucagon-like peptide, your gastric inhibitory polypeptide. They act by raising cyclic AMP which amplifies the effect of calcium. Remember, cyclic AMP. But these agents do not increase insulin secretion in the absence of glucose. There should be glucose. It is the primary simulator of insulin release. Factors that inhibit insulin secretion, alpha-2 adrenergic receptors, which are activated by epinephrine from the adrenal medulla and norepinephrine from postganglionic sympathetic fibers. These act by decreasing cyclic AMP. Another is adrenergic inhibition of insulin will serve to protect against hypoglycemia, especially during exercise. See, nature knows how to protect itself. Beta adrenergic blockers can also inhibit insulin secretion, thiazides, aloxan, somatostatin from the D cells. The insulin receptor is a member of the receptor tyrosine kinase family, composed of the alpha and beta monomers. The alpha subunit are external and contain the hormone binding sites. The beta span the membrane and contain the tyrosine kinase domain. Binding of insulin to the receptor induces cross phosphorylation of each beta subunit on the three tyrosine residues. Events that take place upon by Addition to its receptor membrane, multiple intracellular vesicles, which carry molecules of glucose, transport proteins, and translocate and bind to the cell membrane.
glucose uptake in 80% of the cells in the body takes place within seconds upon binding of insulin to its receptor. True in muscles and adipose cells. Not true in most neurons in the brain. Amino acids, potassium ions, phosphate ions also come inside the cell because cell membrane becomes more permeable to this. Events that take place upon binding of insulin to its membrane receptor continued in three to five minutes. When insulin is no longer available, the first batch of insulin, these vesicles will separate from the cell membrane and will go back inside the cell for recycling if needed. Thus, slower rate of phosphorylation of the enzymes during the next 10 to 15 minutes will follow. Slower rate of translation of your messenger RNA and also transcription of the DNA in the nucleus. This continue to occur for hours and even days. Termination of insulin, receptor signaling, potentially play a role in insulin resistance and type two diabetes mellitus. Insulin down regulate its own receptor by receptor mediated endocytosis. The receptor is being brought back inside. Several serine threonine protein kinases are activated by insulin, which inactivate insulin receptor and IRS proteins. Activation of suppressor of cytokine signaling activation of SOX family of proteins, which reduces activity levels of IR and IRS proteins. Cytokine. principal actions of insulin on the adipose tissue increases glucose entry. So increase fatty acid synthesis, increase glycerol phosphate synthesis, increase triglyceride deposition, activation of lipoprotein lipase inhibition of hormone sensitive lipase increase potassium uptake On the skeletal muscle, increase glucose entry, increase glycogen synthesis, increase amino acid uptake, increase protein synthesis in their ribosomes, decrease protein catabolism, sparer. Decrease release of your gluconeogenic amino acids. Increase ketone uptake. Increase potassium 
update. It's a sparer of protein and uses fat. As a source of energy. In the liver, it decreases cyclic AMP, decreases ketogenesis, sparer of fat. Increase protein synthesis. Increase lipid synthesis. Breakdown of lipid will is the product. The product is ketones, right? Decrease glucose output due to decreased gluconeogenesis and increase glycogen synthesis. Because the deposition of excess glucose takes place in the liver. As long as you have insulin, it will, the glucose will enter the liver and will be converted to glycogen. When there is no more insulin, when the amount of insulin will lower in between meals, for example, then the glycogen inside the liver will be slowly converted to glucose and released into the cells, into the blood, and will find its way into the cells that need them. How about glucagon? This is from the alpha cells. The primary counter regulatory hormone because it increases blood glucose level. So this is a catabolic glycogenolytic Glycogen is the storage form, right, of glucose. Gluconeogenic. That means pro uh, production of glucose from other sources, from amino acids, for example. Lipolytic. Breaks down the fat. And what is the breakdown? Ketones. So ketogenic.